It's been about three months since I got off of social media and my life has drastically changed. And today I want to give you guys a bit of an update. If you're new here, my name is Tash and I am 25 years old. And on this channel, we usually talk about design, culture and wacky things I find on the internet. As I said, I want to give you guys an update on the last three months of me being off of socials. Now, if you watched my previous video, you would know that I was a bit unintentional for me to get off of social media. I accidentally ended up breaking my phone screen and I had to wait a while until I got it fixed. But during this time period, I thought it was a good idea to try and cut myself completely off of social media and kind of get rid of the bad habit because it was taking up at least four hours of my day, if not more, and it was honestly more. Previously, I had tried to get off of social media, but it hadn't really worked. I used things like app timers, but I was one of those people that would just go ahead and cancel it and just continue scrolling. So it didn't really work for me. So it was a bit of a blessing in disguise having my phone break because it meant that I got a clean cut and I could not go on socials. During that time period, I had a dumb phone and I hated this thing, but it was also really cool because of course I obviously couldn't do very much with it, but it made looking at my phone seem unappealing. And this was something that I really needed to actually cut my addiction down. Eventually I did end up getting my phone fixed. It probably took about a month later. And I pretty much vowed that I did not want to have any of these social apps on my phone. Now the worst offending ones for me were TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest. Since then, it's been really interesting. I have kept YouTube, and yes, YouTube is technically a social media app, but we'll discuss that one a little bit later. But for the most part, I've been able to keep pretty much everything off since then. And there's only been a few occasions where I've had to re-download Instagram just to let people know that I was okay, because I am currently traveling and I didn't want people to know that I had just you know, gone up and completely left. So I did go ahead and make a post about it. And I did go ahead and text family and friends when I had landed, but it is now off my phone again. It was only on my phone for maybe a 48 hour period. Number one, it kind of gave me my personality back. Like I know that might sound a bit weird, but because I was spending so much time on my phone, I didn't really have much time for other hobbies or even to develop any other interests aside from scrolling. When my phone was no longer something that I would play with, I started looking at other things. For me, when I first started getting off of my phone, I just continued doing things that I was already doing. So I was reading more and I was also creating YouTube videos. So then as time progressed, I realized I needed other things because you know, my phone was always right next to me. I needed to kind of have other options, other hobbies, because I'd just sit there and kind of be like, what do I do with myself now? What I ended up doing was I ended up going for really long walks. I did bird watching, I started painting, and I started cooking and baking more. And those have all been really great. Bird watching, as middle-aged as it sounds, is actually a lot of fun. I've got this app called the Merlin Bird ID app. It's obviously not sponsored, but I love this app because you can go on a walk and if you see a bird that you do not recognize, you can go ahead and make a recording of it singing and it should come up with the type of bird that it is. Or you can take a photo and ID it that way and then you get to have your own like Pokemon. So I've kind of been collecting my Pokemon birds, which has been really fun. And it has actually been a source of a lot of inspiration and a lot of just appreciation for nature as well, because there have been a couple of times where I've like walked past a bird and went, eh, it's just a pigeon. And then I look at it and I'm like, holy crap, that's actually a an eagle. It actually makes me excited. And it is something that I much prefer to do over going on Instagram. Another thing that I've started doing, which this might be helpful for those of you who are not sure about what to start doing is I started painting. Those are actually a couple of my most recent paintings that I've just started doing. The thing that I like about it is that I used to be very artistic, very creative in high school. So I would suggest for those of you who are unsure about what to do as a hobby, to think back to your high school days and, or even earlier than that, and what you liked to do. Did you like doing art? Were you quite mathematical? Like have a look at what those sorts of things were and then see what kind of hobbies are along those lines. And for me, I loved doing art. 
and I wanted to do some form of like creativity where I'm actually having to move my hands because of course I do YouTube so I'm always using the computer I wanted to do something that was actually physical and <laughs> I've been loving it honestly I've got all this painting supply now and whenever I feel inspired I just sit down and I paint. These days when I am using my phone, it's actually during the times when I'm like painting or making something in the kitchen. And it's usually just to listen to a podcast. My usage for a lot of my apps, specifically YouTube has really changed. As I said, YouTube, yes, it is technically a social media app, but because I do make YouTube videos, I kind of find it hard to get rid of it. But there is one thing that I do try and keep to myself, which is I'm not allowed on shorts and I'm not allowed to just mindlessly watch stuff. So I've got to be very conscious about what I am choosing. The thing that I've really enjoyed about this is that now that I do use YouTube slightly more than beforehand, I feel like I'm using it for more purpose rather than just solely entertainment and mind numbing activity. Usually when I am painting, I'll have yeah the podcast going or something along those lines just to kind of have someone talking to me a little bit. It's been really nice to have different hobbies that are actually quite creative and create something that is actually physical. Like, I feel like everything that I personally do is all online. It's all on a computer. It's all digital. Whereas it's been really nice to have hobbies like painting, like cooking, like bird watching to some extent and having a physicality about it. And I think since getting off of social media, I've really appreciated the real world, which sounds really weird, but I feel more connected to the real world now than I ever have before, especially when I was glued to social media. I have always wanted to be in the digital world. Whereas now I can really happily just sit in the real world and be appreciative of even just like small things like, ah, oh, that bird is slightly different to the other bird. <laughs> I will admit there was a little bit of a transition period that I had to go through. So during the first month and a half, I was really struggling with the fact that I wanted to post things online. I wanted to share what I was doing with my life, especially because I've been doing YouTube. You know, I try and go onto stories and post a story. So it was kind of difficult for me to kind of cut that off. So when I did end up getting my phone back, I downloaded this app called Day One. And it's kind of got like a similar feel to Instagram in terms of posting capabilities. And all it is, is you're posting it to yourself. It kind of helped me ease out of wanting to post because once I didn't have like the likes and the views and that sort of thing, it was just kind of like, okay, yeah, I'm doing this for myself, but now I don't need this app to do it. I just literally just do it on my phone with my photo app. It, I don't actually need it anymore. I only used it for a short time, but I did need it for that little transition period because I think we get very used to feeling like, you know, we're superstars and, you know, posting everything about our lives online that you kind of go, oh, actually this doesn't really matter. <laughs> now it's a lot more just for myself. It's not necessarily for everybody else to see and share. I think some of the biggest positives that I have personally experienced is that my focus is fantastic. My attention span is amazing now as well. I think especially maybe a year or so ago, I was really struggling with like TikTok and like Instagram reels. And obviously YouTube has shorts. I really do wish that they had an option to like cut shorts out completely, but I just steer clear of it and I'm okay but I had really bad attention span. Like it would, it would really be difficult for me to focus in on something and go, okay, I've got to work on this for the next hour. Whereas now I go, yep, yeah, cool. And just settle on in and I'm fine. Like I don't have any issues with trying to get myself into motion to achieve whatever I need to achieve. I think the most fascinating one for me, as I kind of mentioned, is that I feel like I'm in the real world more now. And now that I do obviously use YouTube or even just the internet now, sometimes I find myself getting almost like exhausted and overloaded a lot easier, which kind of is a self-fulfilling prophecy of me not wanting to be online as much as frequently, which I really liked because it's kind of just 
brought my tolerance level way down here and I love that because it means that as soon as I start getting all frazzled, I'm like, okay, I need to go for a walk or I need to get in the kitchen and make something different or use my hands or use my body in some way that isn't just staring at a screen. And I have just loved it, honestly. I don't think I really want Instagram on my phone ever again. I do like using Pinterest on occasion because sometimes, especially for videos where I'm talking about design, that's just where all the great photos are. Like it's not on Google search or anything. I do find myself still needing to use some aspects of some of the apps, but now I feel like I have a much better grip and control over what I am doing, that it doesn't matter if I go onto Pinterest for an hour, and then jump off because I've kind of got this control where it's not mindlessly just scrolling. There have been a few things that obviously haven't changed. The thing that hasn't changed for me is that shorts and anything like that is still extremely appealing. And I have to be very careful about not allowing myself to watch those things because it is kind of like this like little nugget and you just get the quick fix and you feel good. But then immediately afterwards, I feel terrible. So. That has been an interesting thing. I thought that maybe that would change because I've been away from it for so long, but it's still something that I struggle with. And I'm like, okay, I've just got to like, not even look at the short section when it comes up on my phone. I've just got to look for the video that I'm looking for. And then that's it. That's been kind of interesting. And I do kind of question how that relates to human nature and whether or not that's something that you can really truly get rid of. It's the same sort of thing as like comparing yourself to another person. It is very natural. And of course there's negative ways to go about it. But, you know, currently for myself, when I do compare myself to others, it's not necessarily in such a derogatory way to myself. It's kind of more of just a recogni recognition of, yeah, we're different, but it doesn't matter. Even if you do it just for a little detox, it does kind of reset your mind and make you feel better afterwards. I think more and more of us are using it so frequently that we don't really realize when we're actually feeling good and when we're actually feeling bad because we're constantly masking it with the social media. And look, social media inherently is not a bad thing. I do kind of think it is, but to some extent it isn't a bad thing. It's all about how you use it. But we've also got to remember that these apps are designed like slot machines. These apps are designed like someone is gambling. We need to remember the fact that, okay, yes, they are not inherently bad. The way they're being designed is to keep you on for as long as possible. Now that I kind of have that moment of step back and I've been able to like reassess, I kind of just like look at it and go, Ugh. I honestly feel like I'm turning into like a nineties mom because I feel like I need to have like something going in the background, like kitchen nightmares or something, but then actually still being productive with my time and doing the things that I need to do. I feel like I've got hobbies now and I've got a personality now, like I did before, but it felt very suppressed. Of course, I still have those apps because I do want to still to some degree stay connected with people. Sometimes I have people message me from YouTube that want to ask a specific question and I love that, but I'm only going to check it once every couple of weeks, once a month. And if it wasn't for that specific requirement, I actually think by now I would have deleted them. But I think the biggest thing that I have kind of come to realize is that I really want to create over consume now. I don't really want to consume as much media. I don't want to just sit there mindlessly scrolling. I actually want to create something with my hands and really actually feel like I'm living life. And funnily enough, ever since I've done this, I'm much, much more interested in like homesteading and how to make mayonnaise from scratch. It's just like, it's very specific things where I'm like, okay, I kind of don't really want to be completely connected to the internet, completely connected to everything else. I kind of just want to have my little, my little homestead and kind of create everything with love and from my hands. And I think that's probably the most valuable thing that I've gotten out of this and I have really, really enjoyed it. So I hope that this has been helpful for you and it's kind of given you a little bit of a thought into potentially getting off of your phone. I do really think it was an amazing thing for me and I would assume that for most people it would be as well. Let me know in the comments below whether or not you've ever tried to get off of social media and if there's any tips that you may have for others that are wanting to do it as well. 
But thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you on our next internet adventure.